Hey everybody, this is Rudy Sarzo, and I'm here on the dash with a very, very special <laughs> guest, Ty Babylonia. Uh, oh my gosh, Rudy. It's such a pleasure to meet you. I, I've Thank been watching you, you since, you're, since you were a champion. Are you serious? Oh my God, yes. So you're a skating fun. fan, sports well, fan? Yeah, but figure skating is my favorite sport, and I'll tell you why. Who but knew? It's very simple. Okay. What other sports actually has music, rock music? Yes. Along with the sports. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't even think of another one. Yeah. I mean, once in a while, you know, like uh, in, in certain, uh, let's say, basketball games or, ba- you know, sports. Right, you know, right. Like or gymnastics well, has you know, kind of Yeah, they'll have... Something. They'll have like like a rock song. For right. For example, you know, right. a crazy train will come on during the Super Bowl or something right. like that. Right, right. Or as a matter of fact, we had uh, in Quiet Riot, we had Come On Feel The Noise about 15 years ago was the Portland Trailblazers. Anthem. Song. Yeah, oh anthem. my God! Yeah, how cool! Like but yeah. Actually, during the the sports, and I, I I think it's more to me it's more like art than sports. I mean, where do you enjoy because it's like dancing on ice. It's absolutely dancing on ice. So you try to because you have to have that athletic content and you know some sort of dance background, and that's I think what set my partner Randy and I apart was we combined our ballet training and brought it onto the ice so you see like if you compare us to this is back in the 70s and, and and the 80s with some skaters it set us apart because we we were more refined and more of a dance quality with the tricks um, opposed to the eastern Bloc countries for who were just pure athletic so i think that's what people locked into it was very much a California style of skating for Randy and I. Interesting. You you know, I never thought about that, about mm-hmm. the Eastern Bloc countries. Right. I have played there. Yes. I have played anywhere from, uh, Russia. from Bulgaria, Russia, the Ukraine, uh, Belarus. Uh, and mm-hmm. I played there after the curtain came down, the right. wall came right. down, you know, in, in right. the 90s. Uh, my first yeah. show was in 1994, White Nights Festival with White Snake. Uh, hmm. 1994. Yeah, and to actually be on stage watching grown men crying because they were experiencing rock oh, bands wow. for right. the first time. Right, as you know, music was uh, rock music was not was outlawed. Right, they weren't allowed. Well, they here's it. Here's, here's it. Even let's go back even th- uh, further. In 1973, I was 12. Randy and I were the first American pair team to be sent to Moscow. We were like the guinea pigs to see how the Americans would do against those, you know, the Iron Curtain USSR skaters. I was 12 in now, Moscow. Was that a psychological test to see how, if you could endure anything psychological about being in a communist country or was it more of a physical test? It was. I think it was everything. It, the test was how were the Americans going to um, compete against Russia. And we came in 10th. You have to remember, I was 12, Randy was 14. We came in 10th. You know, it was all Russians, like the first top eight. And then Randy and I. But it was, we were, like I said, we were like the guinea pigs to see how Americans would do. And we did okay. No. But I remember when you talk about music in Russia, um, they told us to bring Levi's. You know, put extra Levi's because you oh, can sell them on the side. Yes, yes. And Elton John and ABBA records because mm. they weren't allowed to have. So we would sneak them in and they would just go nuts, the skaters, because they weren't allowed to have. They couldn't rock. They couldn't rock. They couldn't rock. So their program was filled with more classical music? I guess so, yeah. Whereas you were, but were you able to play your own choice of music like let's say rock music in your program um well back then we we were it was not like it is now it was everyone was pretty much classical you know once like the 80s it got a little uh more funky and Mm -hmm. and contemporary and now the rules have changed where skaters can use vocals so that's what you're seeing now but that's a new rule that just changed how you can really I, skate to anything you want. Really? I mean, how long yeah. ago was that rule change? That um, probably 
five years ago. Really? I could be wrong, but I think maybe really? five, maybe longer. Who yeah. sets the rules on who breaks the rules? The, uh, it's called the USFS, and it's the United States Figure Skating Association, and the ISU, the International Skating Union, makes these rules. And the, uh, I know the reason that they changed that music rule was mm-hmm. because skating was, in the ratings, low. Oh, TV really? ratings. And so they thought, let's, you know, they wanted to get a little more hip. So let's let the kids or the, the, the skaters, you know, skate to more up-tempo and current music. That included vocals. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it has changed, but it's much more enjoyable much more enjoyable to watch. And the skaters are having more fun. Okay, so it doesn't get in the way of the skaters. No, they uh, love it, you know. Focusing on, on right. what they're... Not at all. Not how, at all. How does the skater choose the music where it will be, would they be like driving down the freeway and something comes on and you go, I would love to skate to that. Is that, is that part of the I think process? it's that. I think, well, when I was growing up, my mom picked the music. There is, um, she was, she was just in tune with, with, and was stri- strictly classical, but she knew what people loved. She knew what I loved and she would go, I remember so vividly where there was a place called Wallach's Music City. In Hollywood, where you can go into booths mm-hmm. and put headphones on and put, you know, we had records then and put the records on and she would just listen and listen and listen and then take it to the coach and he would either approve it or say, go get something else. And that's how we did it. Oh my God. So, so the, the, the process is, you, let's say your mom or you mm-hmm. say, okay, I like the song that you take it to the coach. And yes. Does the uh, committee have to approve of the music? Too? No, no, not really. Not really. And you kind of know the, the format. You don't want it back then. It, you know, you just want it to be, you know, what made the skater happy, what was lyrical, you know, different. Like you would have a strong section at the beginning and then a slow section in the middle. Yeah to kind of breathe because they were five minute numbers yeah. and then you kick it up in the last minute to something you know peppy how long is, is an actual program skating program for us back then they were five minutes now they're five four minutes. four and a half minutes four and a half. yeah and it uh, seems like it takes forever you know I'm, i mean i've been in awe of your sports mm-hmm. slash art right exactly and uh because i I lived in New Jersey for a little okay. bit. I tried skating, and I was a very heavy set kid. I fell right. a lot. You were I heavy was, set. I was. Uh, I, was I can't 200 even. Two hundred pounds when I was sixteen years Stop. old. Stop. Oh yeah. I'll show you my my uh, my high. Are there pictures in the book? Picture. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! I have to see. But but it, you know it. Yeah, I was. It's not easy. But I it, the way I look at it is I was a skinny kid inside of a fat body. Okay. All right. Because I always thought skinny. I didn't right. feel comfortable. If if I get like, for example, when I get off the road, yes, I put on weight because I'm not sweating every night on stage. Right. Or even if I go to the gym, it's what makes you makes me sweat the most is the yeah. adrenaline. I understand and you that. Being a, I understand that. You know what adrenaline? Absolutely. Is Absolutely. Yeah. Having said that, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Is, is there What's the difference between practicing Mm -hmm. and the actual being in competition, the (laughs) adrenaline flow? What's the difference? Yeah. There's no comparison. There's no comparison. Um, Rehearsal or practice is, you know, it's, it's kind of automatic. And is it fun? No. But without the training, you can't, you know, you can't compete. You have to train and you have to train hard on the ice and off the ice. Um... But performing in, in a competition, like I said, we back then in the 70s and in the 80s, we had five minutes to get it right. So those five minutes on the ice can determine your future, can determine the next four years for you. So the, the intenseness, you know, I look back at it now, it's like, how did we do this? How did we, it's almost like, when I look at footage of Randy and myself, it's like two different people. It's like two separate people that I know really well compared to who I am now. Because I just, it's, it's like I can't believe we all did this. But we did it because we loved it. We yeah. did it because we craved it. We did it because we, we just wanted to be the best that we could be. But those... Now, if you were there as you are and you have so many questions, mm-hmm. imagine me from the outside... I have about a thousand times more questions right. about it. Right. How do you, how, how, the commitment that you have to make to each other 
Absolutely. And each other's family and each other's future. And the and, coach. And coach. Yeah. Tell me about the coach. The how, coach. How, how, I don't know how he did it. Our coach, uh, Mr. Well, we started with a, the woman who put us together. And we'll talk about this because I'm working on a, a film project about her. Her name was Mabel Fairbanks. And there was a rink in Culver City. It's now a hardware store on Sepulveda Boulevard. I'm sure you've passed it. Mm. You know that rink. Yes, I have. Yes. That's where I. That's where I met Randy 50 years so ago. So they pair you. She. She. Um. It's such a great story. She had to bribe me to hold his hand. You know, I hardly knew him, and she How just old were you then? eight and ten. Eight and ten. So this year we celebrate our 50th anniversary. He was ten. You were eight. And she said, "Ty, I want you to hold his hand." and just skate around the rink together. And I knew nothing about pair skating. I hardly knew Randy. and But she saw something in the two of us. I'm not sure what it was, because I never asked her, you know, before she passed away. But she, you know, she created Ty and Randy. She gets all the credit. So from there, from her, we went to a coach named Mr. Nix in 1972. There was a rink in Santa Monica on Fifth and Broadway. Which, which turned into a Fred Siegel, and I don't know what it is now, but that was where we trained from 72 until 1980. So we did two Olympics, trained for two Olympics at that rink. Um, the commitment, it, it, it's incredible, but that's exactly what it is. It takes a village. Like without our parents, there's no way Randy and I could, could have done it. Um, and then the commitment to stay together for this long. You rarely see a pair team that can say we're celebrating our 50th anniversary. I've never had another partner, and he, we made that commitment early on. You see a lot of teams breaking up and going for the bigger partner or the skinnier little girl, the one who can do the jumps, and through thick and thin, Randy and I stu stuck together. And that is what I'm most proud of, that the friendship stayed intact is huge for me, more than any of the, you know, being on the Olympic team and winning the world championships and all the, you know, touring and making the money, blah, 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 it's the friendship. It's the friendship that I'm most proud of. That's a beautiful story. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Now, you mentioned jumping. Mm -hmm. I've always been uh, in awe of not just the skill, mm -hmm. but the trust that yes. you must have when you, once you make the jump that your partner's going to catch you. Right. Right. How long did it take you to develop that trust? Because I'm pretty sure when you were eight years old, and well, mm -hmm. I mean, when did you start doing the jumping and all those? Probably the, the um, once we went to Mr. Nix mm -hmm. or the the um, more of the pair coach. He was like the number one pair coach. Mm -hmm. That's when we started to improve and excel, and that's when you start doing the throws and the twist. And Randy has to catch me, and you know, just it's the it's progression. So he was 12, Randy was 12, 13? Yeah, we were early teens when it, when it all started to happen. And, and it just, you know, the combination of learning the tricks off the ice and then taking them on the ice. And yeah, we, you know, I fell and there, you know, there were some horrible spills. But when you love something so much, it's like this is part of, this is part of the process. You have to fall to improve. That's it. And that's what I tell you know, someone who's just starting out, like a beginner skater, it's like when you fall, that's how you learn. And you never blame him for like saying never. If you fell. That's wonderful. Never. That's an incredible amount of trust. Yes. Yeah. How, how how long did it take you to develop that trust that it's not his fault, it's your fault, and you have to improve your game? I think it's, whether I knew it or not, it started from the very beginning as, as kids. It just, because there's a special no bond. Well, it's just, there was that bond. You know, I'm skating. How lucky that I'm skating with my best friend. Wow. And there were times when, when he could have gone for a tinier partner. Yeah. Or I could have gone for a pair of a, a guy who was six feet, which you see now. You see the little girl and the tall boy. Uh -huh. If you go and if you look at pair skating now. Uh -huh. And Randy and I are very, are very similar in height. Mm. And that's what set us apart. Was you see us and you see this, this mirror image and it's, it's not an illusion, it's because we're similar in height. And it's just a different type of pair skating that people hooked into and loved it. How many and hours it. a day or a week did you have to devote to mm, what you call rehearsal? The hard, yeah. Well, for the Olympic, like training for the Olympics? Uh-huh. Let's say six, at the beginning, at the beginning. Let's say oh, the one, beginning? Yeah. Uh, well, you skate, you know, six days a week few hours a day and back then we were you know we were in public school 
So you have to balance the school out, and you go in early, like 5 in the morning, and skate for a few hours, go to school, come back after school, and get back on the ice for another few hours. That's the beginning.